I mean, it's so frustrating, and I don't, I don't know how you can contain it, because with your understanding of what's going on, it's like all the leaders in Africa you see will just be like, they're just puppets. They're not really doing anything. And it's like, why are they even in office in the first place? And so it's good that now we are seeing the revolution happening in the West African countries. And I don't think they're finished. I think, I think there's, we have a few more countries left. The only survivor of the presidents are those who are going to hear what I'm saying. Only those who are going to survive. Put aside your guns, put aside your military mindset. Start an economic revolution. You may just survive. Because this issue of five years election, five years election, we now know for the past 60 years, it's a waste of time. People have, even this thing of in democracy, it's, it's, it's a stupid concept. Because if democracy was for free, then why did we fight for it? If the white people knew that we needed democracy, then why did you colonize us? Why didn't you bring democracy in the first place? In fact, it is Africa now that is teaching the world democracy. Because you, you oppressed us, and in some cases we are still working in our countries and we have not killed you. We are giving you freedom, which you were not giving us when you were in power. So who is democratic now? Is it the one who was oppressing or the one who is free and is giving you access to your own freedom also? So African democracy has actually liberated colonialists who were trapped in their world of supremacy and could not even practice democracy because they were not democratic themselves. So Africans beginning to understand who we are, where we are coming from, brewing and breeding a new breed of politicians who have a different conversations, putting these politicians in positions of influence where we can influence policy. We are able to start stopping fighting over colonial papers of voting and elections and all this useless time-wasting ex exercise. The real exercise is activating the economy. And once people have the economy in their hands, let me make it very simple. Own your means of production and own your value chains in the means of production. It's only when you begin to get into manufacturing that you don't need to worry about employment. You don't need to worry about the middle economy because once there is ownership of land and there is exploitation of that land, not only in agriculture, but in housing, in farming, in dams, in mining, in etc. Once the land is in the hands of the people, then people are going to create for themselves work. And with the work, people are going to improve themselves, create their own businesses. Government will never lose money when people are doing business. Because then you have a bigger tax base than taxing only a few individuals. Now you have created more economy at the bottom. And through that economy, you can be able to create a broader tax base. And tell me, five people give you 5,000 5, um, uh, shillings each. Or one million people give you 100 shillings each. Who has more money? So you cannot focus at five people mm. who are going to give you oh, 10, 10, 10, 10. I have 50,000. Okay. I'll have 42 million people. Give me a dollar. Give me a, a shilling each. I'll still beat you with my hands down. So why is it that our governments are not looking at investing in the people? Because they are looking at short-term profit with the people that are already in business. This is long-term. This is short-term. And because it's short term, I'm only here for five years. And you're going to vote me out. So there's no way I can sit around and have a plan for this country, which is 150 years. And I will not be here in 150 years. So our government ministers and presidents are busy signing treaties behind the doors for two and a half, three year plan, five year at most, and etc. I mean, look at Zimbabwe at one time. There's a dam that was commissioned to be built in 1912. 1912. Only two years ago, did President Mnangagwa started, started, start building that dam. Because every government that comes in, it's a long-term project. It won't be finished in five years. It might not be finished in six years. Real infrastructure development is not a short-term program. It's a long-term program. But when you have a leader who is a short-term in office, and you as a country are expecting 
long-term solutions. You will keep on changing leaders and multiplying the pace of long-term projects will never be reached.